been seeing so many articles lately from people who talk about how they left their jobs to start a business and it was so amazing. It was the best thing they ever did and everyone should do it that way because taking that risk and burning your boats is the only way to do it and it's so sexy and if you're a real entrepreneur, that's how you'll do it. And you know what? Good for those people. But I hate it when someone just gives one side of the picture without sharing the whole story, the whole background for what's going on. Because the truth is, it's amazing to leave your nine to five and have your own business and I honestly truly believe that it's possible for anybody. However, there's a wrong way and a right way to do it. I see so many people who just up and leave and think they're just gonna make it work because they've got that determination and then they struggle to pay their bills because they don't have any money coming in. They didn't just jump in and net appeared and it gets so bad that eventually they have to go back to a nine to five. Of course, nobody wants to write a story about that. But if you watch this channel, you know I'm all about giving you the actual truth about running and building your your own online business so that you know how to actually succeed and have a real business that allows you to have the freedom, income, and impact that you want for life. So if I were to do what those articles do, I would say something like, guess what? I left my job and two months after I did, I made $100,000 in one month. And that would be really misleading because that wouldn't tell you the behind the scenes of everything I'd done to set myself up to make that happen. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the four things that you have to do to make sure that you leave your nine to five the right way so that once you leave that corporate job, you never have to go back. The first thing that you'll want to do is to plan to minimize your expenses for at least the first year after you leave your nine to five. So for me, I took it to the extreme. At the time in my job, I had this really amazing six figure salary and I had this gorgeous apartment in downtown Chicago. But I also knew that the rent was pretty pricey and I didn't wanna be stressing out about whether or not I could pay my rent in the first year of building my business full time. So you know what I did? I moved in with my then boyfriend, now husband, in the Bronx. If you are not familiar with New York, the Bronx is not the best neighborhood. Nothing wrong with it, but just to put it into context. When I moved in, he was sleeping on a bamboo mat. He had a desk, a computer, and that was pretty much it. So at least I got to bring in my furniture. So it was him, me, and uh, the cockroaches in the cupboard that nothing could get rid of. But you know what? I did not mind because the rent was about a third, if not less, than what I had been paying. I also basically did not spend any money outside of the investments I made in my business. So no shopping, no going out to eat, no vacations, none of that. And I planned to do that for at least a year, if not longer. Now, I didn't have any kids or dependents, so I was able to take that to an extreme dream. But if you do, don't worry, we're going to go over some other things later on in this video that are going to help you even more. So that was already pretty drastic. But you know what? Again, that is the unsexy side of entrepreneurship that so few other people talk about. I told myself I was just going to give it my all to make sure I did not waste this chance. What's more, moving on to tip number two, it wasn't just me that went all in. I basically set the expectation for all my friends and family that I was going all in so they could handle that accordingly. So for example, to my parents and my sister, I said, hey guys, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing any traveling, no presents. I'm probably not even gonna talk to you that much for the next year because I'm going all in on my business. I'm probably not gonna have a lot of disposable income or time. And you know what? I know it's gonna suck in the short term, but I'm doing this not just for me, but for all of us. And so I could really use your support. I also told my husband the same thing. And I also said to him, look, I know I'm gonna be at home, but I'm gonna be working all the time. So I don't want you thinking that you can just tell me to go and run errands because I'm at home. So it wasn't like I was asking anybody around me to give me money, but I was asking for their understanding and support, which is just as important because the truth is nobody does this alone. It really takes a village of people, in my case, not bothering you, not expecting you to call them all the time or pay for presents or go on a vacation together to help you make that vision happen. Now, the good news was this was not really that unexpected to anyone around me because I've been doing tip number three, set up your business 
before you leave your nine to five. Ideally, you want to be setting it up and making revenue before you turn in your notice, but we'll get to that in just a second. At a minimum, you want to be using as much of your salary as you can while you have it to invest back into your business. For example, for me, I used my salary to pay a lawyer to help me set up my business, help me create legal contracts for my website and my clients. I hired a designer to help me set up a website. I also invested in courses and coaches before I left my job so that I could use my salary and do that versus having to struggle to use my business income to pay for everything. Now, here's the thing I want you to understand. I know this is not easy. In fact, for me, it took me about two years of kind of trying something, taking two months off, putting up an ugly website, taking three months off and kind of going back and forth because my job, it wasn't the best thing in the world, but it was good. The pay was good. It was good enough. And so I really struggled to find that motivation for a long time. And then once I did, all I wanted to do was to leave my job. There was about like a year or two where it felt like every week I was calling my mom and telling her, hey, you know what? This thing happened at work. It sucks. I have to leave my job. And this was before I had anything set up and had any clients and really any clue what I was doing. Thank goodness my mom talked me off that ledge every single time. She would say like, you know what? Why don't you just wait another week or two? At least wait until you've made a little bit more traction in your business. And you know what? Thankfully, <laughs> She never lost her patience with me basically playing this game for about one to two years until the day when I was able to fully turn in my notice and leave my job with my business built and money in the bank. A lot of people ask me, but Louisa, I am so busy in my job right now. I have a family, I have a job, I have a life. How am I gonna have time to work on my business? I need to leave my job so that I have more time to work on my business. Here's what I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna give you some tough love because this is what's needed right now. I have helped at this point, I don't even know how many thousands of students and clients through all my various courses and coaching programs. And I have seen this without fail. If you do not have the motivation to work on your business before you leave your nine to five, you definitely won't have it afterwards either. Here's why. First of all, when you are in a job, you don't have to stress about paying your bills. When you turn in that notice, no matter how exciting it is, that adds a whole new layer of uncertainty that you have to deal with. The best way to deal with that uncertainty is to have built some stability and certainty into your business already through knowing what business you're doing, having channels set up to drive in clients, having your offers, having made sales, having revenue come in. If you don't have that, way too often I see people getting stressed about, oh my gosh, am I going to pay the bills. And when you're in that fight or flight state, you don't have the presence of mind to think about anything else. What's more, most of us are creatures of habit, no matter how much we dislike those habits, like going to work at a job. When you have your job, you have structure. You have to work Monday through Friday. You get up at a certain time, you sleep at a certain time, and you have certain pockets of time free, even if they're really small. No matter how hard it is, it's actually still easier to fit working your business into those small pockets first and get up and running versus when you have nothing to do except work on your business. You will find yourself sitting down, not knowing where to start, feeling really overwhelmed, starting to think about how many months saving you have left and then going into that downward spiral. Again, it seems counterintuitive, but I have seen this just way too many times and I don't want that to happen to you. So make sure you've at the very least got your business set up. Now that's actually not the only minimum because that brings me to tip number four, which is to have at least one of the three, two, one rule in place. So this is a rule that I came up with. I can't help it. I love numbers, systems, strategies. I am a former space station engineer after all. So I'm going to break down the three, two, one rule for you. If you have at least one of these set up before you turn in your notice, your chances of succeeding and becoming a full-time entrepreneur for a life are going to dramatically increase. And if you can have more than one set up, then amazing. So the three in three, two, one is to have at least 
three months of consistent sales in your business before you turn in your notice. Usually when you've got that, you've worked on your mindset, you've overcome your fears, you've learned the basics of having an offer, marketing it, selling it, getting clients, and you've got some cash in the bank for your business and probably more payments coming in. That means that not only do you have a little bit more of a cushion in your business financially, but also that you probably know how to go out there and continue making sales consistently every single month. Now that is really ideal, but there are some other options as well. And that brings me to the two in the three, two, one rule. Be making at least two times your expenses with ideal a little bit more than that, but at least two times your expenses from your business before you turn in your notice. Now there are some caveats with this rule. I'm assuming that you are building a coaching service-based type business where the margins are really low. So you're not having to spend 90% of your revenue to just maintain your business. So if we're able to assume that, and in the especially beginning stages of your business, it's just you and your business providing a service, then pretty much almost 100% of your revenue is going to be pure profit. Let's say 90% just to be conservative. That means after taxes, which you definitely have to account for, right? The only two sure things in life are taxes and death. After that, then what you keep is the remaining 50%, which means that you're able to cover your expenses. That way you don't have to dip into your savings or build up a massive savings runway before you're able to leave your nine to five. Now, that being said, there is one other option in the three, two, one rule, which is to have one year of living expenses saved up before you turn in your notice. And just to be honest with you, back when I was in my nine to five, that would have felt so daunting. While your business can get off the ground a lot sooner than that, you don't want to plan for the best case scenario. You want to plan to be prepared for the worst case scenario, which is that it could take you a year to start getting things going. If you have just one of those, then you are going to increase your chances of long-term success by so much. It's crazy. Now, if you're like me and you're super risk averse, I recommend having as many of these things set up as possible before you leave. In fact, the reason why I was able to make $100,000 in a month, like two months after I turned in my notice was not because I had an overnight success or things just dramatically turned around for me all of a sudden. It's because I had done all of these things. I had built my business before I turned in my notice. I had built my business to six figures, in fact, and I had done that and built up my clients, made sure I followed the three two minus the one rule. And so when I turned in my notice, I had all of these things set up. Now it was not easy. I mean, I had so many obstacles and failures, but it's possible. And you don't necessarily need to make six figures. So if you are like me and you're thinking, you know what, I have a good job. I want to leave it, but I've worked my butt off to get here. I'm not just going to turn in my notice and hope things work out. Then I've got an awesome PDF for you on the nine to five escape velocity plan to use, to be able to build your business to the point where you're able to leave your nine to five. So I'm going to link that PDF for you either somewhere on the screen and or in the description below. So you can go ahead and grab that if you want it. And if this has gotten you motivated to think, okay, you know what? This is possible. I'm ready. I'm going for it. Then you are going to love my next video on how to start your coaching business in 24 hours. I will link it for you right here. So make sure you go and check it out.